Okay, all right. We're here with the uh, the new Lotus concept. Theory one. What is theory one? Well, theory one is, is many things, but you know, to, to, to start at the beginning of the story, um, this is an expression of a new design language. So we, we want to convey a very simple message about where we're going in the future and, and connect our heritage with our future direction. With the start of this project, what we're actually expressing is, is the start of this, this uh, evolved design language, design theory, um, which we frame as our DNA. So what we've, we've loosely done is take those three letters from a, a universally understood phrase and uh, turn them into a theory which represents digital, natural and analog. So the digital side of what we do is about a super immersive experience and how we bring all of the latest technologies to life. The natural side of things is, is very much a human centric design. So always being tailored around uh, the human being, the core of everything that we do. And uh, the analog is very much a continuation of our performance car engineering. It's the lifeblood of what made Lotus famous so many years ago. That DNA narrative layers up very simply in, in kind of reverse order. The lower area of the car is the exposed structure. It's the passive aerodynamic systems of the car. Through the middle, represented here in this fantastic pearlescent satin white, we have the more natural element of the car. There's a very, very logical and dogmatic graphical form to the car and some wonderful sculpture that comes alive as we, we move around the car and you'll see in the film that in the three dimensions. And then at the top of the car, almost a seamless uh, glazed area. And as you can just see on the side of the car, the technology is all embedded in that. So digital at the top, embedded in the glazing, natural form through the middle and a pure graphical statement. And then the analog performance engineering at the lower part of the car. Let's go and take a, a closer look. One key element of this car is something that we've reinterpreted from an icon of our past, this singular line that runs from nose to tail around the car, very much drawn from our history with the Esprit. It's now reinvented as a line of technology. So this is a communicative device. As I approach the car, it senses I'm here and the car will come alive. And it's interesting, just to have a shot, the, the, the viewers won't see this, but the Lotus Esprit is parked just yeah. uh, uh, alongside us. But that, was that a natural jumping off point? We know that very strong line from the Esprit expressed here is a kind of a, a, technological, uh, a, a technological expression. Was that for you a natural jumping off point? For me, and I think for, for all of us in the creative team, and indeed many people who are kind of uh, advocates or fans of the brand, the, the Esprit represents the most iconic road car we've ever produced. That car resonated in popular culture. It was an exotic of its time, and it's a... Uh, legacy hero, if you like, is, is very much a jumping off point. But we don't want to express things in, in the way of pastiche design. You know, Lotus has always been a super progressive brand and, and company, and it's about capturing the spirit of what that car represented, I guess, in its, its day of creation, the modernity of it and the, the purity and the simplicity of expression. So this idea of the, the technological line we have here, the Lotus Wear tech line, is a reinterpretation of that functional joining split, which dogmatically defines the, the kind of low water line of the Esprit and where the section changes. And we've put that line through this car again, where the section, the material indeed changes, but the function now is embedding it with all the technology which we have to incorporate in vehicles today. And the reason for doing that is to give us a very strict rationale for the zoning of that technology to ensure that the car has a super pure expression and we don't have a scenario where there's lots of little things assembled in various areas. So zoning the technology and reinventing that functional split line of the S1 Esprit is, is a core part of this project. This car is very much about aerodynamics. Very sharp nose section as, as we do in all of our Lotus cars. This defines the entire form of the car. And the monomateriality really kind of celebrates that separation of, of what is dynamic technology and aerodynamic prowess in the lower of the car. And then as we move up through the layers, you have uh, the technology to really bring the car to life. Laser lighting systems here of the latest generation, it's completely brand appropriate, super lightweight, physically, super minimum in the actual size and very, very technical in its expressions. These things you notice actually is this, you've been very, very um, uh, clear in trying to express the structure of the car through these apertures here and yeah. uh, explain a little bit about the, the thinking there. It's very much how we, we, we talk about where we come from, um, to be honest. The layering and that sensation of how you can see exactly how the car functions and works and goes together is, is a key part of how we're going to push things forward in the future. 
Just standing over the car, you have this sense of a very pure form. There's a sculpture with a really voluptuous nature to it that, that talks to the, the iconography of performance vehicles since the kind of heydays of, uh, of beauty maybe in the 1960s. And we combine that with some of the sheerness and the dogmatic approach of uh, the S1 Esprit to, to create a new aesthetic. The cutback here was very, very sheer in the sense you don't get, you don't necessarily read that on the first go, particularly yeah. approaching yeah. profile. Yeah. We had that very uh, extreme change in section which you see there in the body and that, that references the almost wedge-shaped section you have on the, the body side of the Esprit and we've chosen to accentuate that by dividing the material value there as well. One of the things we're saying here as well, this is um, recycled carbon fibre that is very, very apparent on the exterior of the car, but this is something that we truly are designing from the inside out, the outside in, vice versa. We, we ask, what are the arms? Well, and the best way to express that is to open the doors. This is a completely unique development we have. It's internally theorised and conceptualised by the creative team at Lotus to give the complete wow factor that you expect in, in high end performance vehicles, but primarily to actually solve uh, the entry egress dilemma of, of high performance cars. This is very much shaped around the driver. We have the driver sitting in the best position possible, directly in between the wheels. And to be able to facilitate entry egress in the best way, moving the door to the rear of the car completely out of the way uh, seemed to, to us to be the best solution. You can simply step in right behind the front wheel as you would with a single seat race car and, and almost step down into the seat. There's, there's nothing over my head. We were looking at the fact that, you know, modern production vehicles today are usually made up of around 100 A surface materials. And so we developed this mantra, which we call the challenge of 10, which was looking at if we can actually achieve building a vehicle with only 10 A surface materials. And, and that drives this very, very seamless approach to the, the interior and the exterior of the vehicle because the materials flow inside and out in a way which is um, very obvious if you have the opportunity to come see the vehicle like we are today. The rear of the car continues the, the same uh, logic and rationale directly. Lower area of the car, you can see obviously the vehicle like this large diffuser. Again, it's all in that, uh, that um, chopped recycled carbon fiber material and hugely open. The idea of porosity and read through is, is super apparent at the back of the car. You can see the channels where the air disappears behind the, the white bodywork and all of this carbon fiber uh, surfacing manages the airflow and pushes it out towards the rear of the car. And indeed, we have further celebration of technology and uh, the technical aspects of this, this car. It's all completely on show. The, the wing pops up to enhance the, the aerodynamic performance of the vehicle. Of course, that's, that's a known entity, but it's also a, a kind of zoning of technology again. As we have the technology line on the side of the car, which brings together everything, the concept's the same at the rear. With the wing deployed, you can then see various other things. Of course, amazingly tricked mechanism to allow the multi-stage deployment and indeed air brake and many other functions of this wing. And it also gives access to the charge point. So uh, how we replenish energy into the vehicle is, is hidden underneath that wing. When the wing goes to maximum angle of attack, which is actually the air brake, you can then access the charge points and, and replenish the energy. The laser wire in the rear is actually floating. You know, that, that kind of impossible engineering or the, the celebration of the technical capabilities that we have is part of the narrative. It feels like that old chap the mantra of adding lightness. I mean, this is, this is really that in there. Large it is, it is. I mean, that's uh, something that people know of the brand and, uh, you know, making sure that we can visually express that and communicate it very clearly with people is a core part of what drives us in the design and creative teams. Uh, speaking of the brand itself, this is obviously theory one. It's yep. just on a journey of theory two, theory three, theory four. I mean, it's a statement of intent without doubt. Yeah. Where, where are we going? Where will we see Lotus taking well, it, it is a statement of intent. So th this project uh, started from a series of, of off-program off innovations, lots of things that we do in the background, and we wanted to bring lots of the systems and the ideas and the collaborations that we have together uh, in a tangible package where um, people can, can understand a, a future brand direction. So you know, this program pulls together lots of uh, things that we have uh, de in development, which are at various sort of stages of, uh, of readiness, let's say. Um, and it expresses a, a brand future on top of that. So the direction of travel is, is really kind of indicated by this Theory One project um, and what comes next.
you know, to come back to see us next time and, and find out. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time, Ben. Really interesting.